Hi guys, Miss Barbara here. This lesson is titled Trigonometric Identities. The objectives of this lesson are 1. Be able to simplify trigonometric expressions and 2. Be able to prove trigonometric identities. Provided for you is a list of the basic trig identities we have learned thus far and memorized. They are the reciprocal identities, the Pythagorean identities, the even odd trigonometric identities, and the cofunction identities. Roman numeral one, simplifying trigonometric identities. An identity is an equation that is true for all values of the variables. A trigonometric identity is an identity involving trigonometric functions. Identities enable us to write the same expression in different ways. It is often possible to rewrite a complicated looking expression as a much simpler one. To simplify trigonometric expressions we use factoring common denominators, special product formulas, and fundamental trig identities which you have memorized. Simplify the expressions a sine x times secant x. It is simpler to express something as one term instead of a product of two. I begin this problem by converting everything to sines and cosines. So I'll write this as the sine x stays put. Secant x is reciprocal for one over cosine x. Then I can multiply this across and I'll have sine x divided by cosine x, which is tangent x. So now we have simplified that expression. Part b, sine u plus cotan u times cosine u. I'll begin this expression by simplifying cotan u, that is express it in terms of sines and cosines. So the sine u stays put. I will rewrite cotangent u with its identity cosine u divided by sine u times the cosine u. Let's continue. Now I am going to multiply sine u to get a common denominator. So I will then do sine u over sine u times sine u plus, and for the right hand term, cosine u times cosine u is cosine squared u divided by sine u. Let's continue. Sine u times sine u for the numerator is sine squared u, and that's still over sine of u. Look at that, we have a common denominator for these two fraction terms, so we can write it over the same denominator. We'll write this as sine squared u plus cosine squared u divided by sine of u. Sine squared u plus cosine squared u equals one, that's a Pythagorean identity, divide it by sine of u, and that is a reciprocal identity for cosecant u. Part C, we need to simplify tangent theta plus cosine theta divided by one plus sine theta. I will begin simplifying this expression by writing tangent in terms of sines and cosines. So I will have sine theta divided by cosine theta for the tangent, and I'll go ahead and write cosine theta one plus sine theta. If I don't see an identity right away, I usually change it to sines and cosines. Another algebraic method that comes in very handy is to get a common denominator. So for the sine over cosine, I will multiply it by a factor of one that uses the expression in the denominator of the right-hand term. So I'll write one plus sine theta 
divide it by 1 plus sine theta. And for the right-hand term, I'll multiply by a factor of 1 that uses the denominator of the left-hand term. So I'll have cosine theta over cosine theta. Now, let's distribute. So on the left-hand side, I will have sine theta plus sine squared theta. On the right-hand side, I will have cosine squared theta, and all of this is over the common denominator of cosine theta times 1 plus sine theta. Now we have another Pythagorean identity, and that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is 1. So I'll replace the sine squared theta and cosine squared theta with 1. Then the denominator is still cosine theta, 1 plus sine theta we see another set of cancellations. The sine theta plus 1 in the numerator and the 1 plus sine theta in the denominator. So if we cancel those, then we end up with 1 over cosine theta, and that is a reciprocal identity for secant theta. Guidelines for proving trigonometric identities. Step 1. Start with one side. Pick one side of the equation and write it. Your goal is to transform it into the expression on the other side of the equal symbol. It is usually easier to start with the more complicated expression. 2. Use known identities. Use algebra and the identities you know to transform the side on which you began. Bring fractional expressions to a common denominator. Factor and or use fundamental identities to simplify. And three, convert to sines and cosines. To get started, it is often helpful to rewrite all functions in terms of sines and cosines. Verify part A, tan y divided by cosecant y equals secant y minus cosine y. I have found in practice that it is easier to get a common term from a subtraction than to change a rational expression into a subtraction. So to begin this problem, I'm going to start on the right hand side and change everything to sine and cosine. So secant y is the reciprocal function for cosine y, so I'll write that as 1 over cosine y, and go ahead and subtract the existing cosine y. Now in order to combine, I need a common denominator, so for the cosine y, I will multiply by a factor of 1 that is expressed as cosine y divided by cosine y. Now I have a common denominator, so the denominator is cosine of y, and in the numerator, I'll have 1 minus, and cosine y times cosine y is cosine squared y. 1 minus cosine squared y is part of a Pythagorean theorem, which is equivalent to sine squared y, and that's still divided by cosine of y. In order to help me visualize, I am going to split the co I'm sorry, I am going to split the sine squared y into a product of two sines. So sine y times sine y divided by cosine y. I am going to choose to see sine y over cosine y as one expression, so that gives me tan y times sine y. That's pretty close, but on the left hand side I have tan y divided by cosecant y, and I also know that sine y is reciprocal of the cosecant function, so I'll write it as 1 over cosecant y, and when combined into one expression, get tangent y over cosecant y. 
Please note, all the transformations took place on one side of the equal sign. That is a fundamental requirement when verifying identities. Part B, the expression one minus cosine x all divided by sine x plus sine x divided by the expression one minus cosine x is equal to two times cosecant x. At first glance, the expression on the left-hand side is more complicated, and so that's the side I'm going to pursue. The next thing I observe is that we are adding two fractions, so let's get a common denominator. On the left-hand side, I need a common denominator. Part missing is 1 minus cosine x from the right-hand term, so I'll have 1 minus cosine x. Remember, I'm multiplying by a factor of 1 so that I don't change the value. And I'll multiply that to the existing 1 minus cosine x divided by sine x. And then for the second term, which I have is sine x over 1 minus cosine x, I will multiply that entire fraction by a factor of 1 that I express as sine x divided by sine x. Now let's multiply across. So for the 1 minus cosine x times 1 minus cosine x, I will have, and that's two binomials, right? So we're going to have 1 minus 2 cosine x plus cosine x times cosine x is cosine squared x. and on the right-hand term, sine x times sine x is sine squared x, and we have a common denominator of 1 minus cosine x times sine x. Now, right now, it doesn't look any simpler, but we step back for a moment, and you notice the cosine squared x plus sine squared x, which is a Pythagorean identity. So now we can replace. So we got 1 minus 2 cosine x. Cosine squared x plus sine squared x is just 1. The denominator still stays the same. 1 minus cosine x times sine x. Let's continue. I can, in the numerator, I have 1 minus 2 cosine x plus 1. Let's add the two constants together. So we'll have 2 minus 2 cosine x divided by 1 minus cosine x times sine x. And we're going to continue. I can factor out a 2 from the numerator. And so 2 times 1 minus cosine x, now you're seeing it, still divided by 1 minus cosine x, sine x. The 1 minus cosine x is cancel, and we get 2 divided by sine x. 1 over sine x is reciprocal for cosecant x, so this is 2 times cosecant x. And we have demonstrated by transforming the expression on the left-hand side to match the expression on the right-hand side that this is indeed an identity. And part C, the expression sine x minus 1 divided by sine x plus 1 is equal to the negative of cosine squared x divided by the quantity sine x plus 1 squared. On observation, I notice that the denominator on the right-hand side is the denominator of the left-hand side squared. So I'm going to choose to begin this verification by transforming the expression on the left-hand side. I will begin by writing the left-hand side, which is sine x minus 1, divide it by sine x plus 1, and multiply this by a factor of 1. I will multiply by sine x plus 1 in the denominator times sine x plus 1 in the numerator. So let's multiply across. 
we're going to have sine x plus 1, sine x minus 1, that is a difference of squares. So when you multiply these two binomials together, you will get sine squared x minus 1, and the denominator is sine x plus 1, that quantity squared. Now, the denominator looks just like the expression on the right-hand side. The numerator, not so much. We're going to work with the Pythagorean theorem, so let's work with that. The Pythagorean theorem states sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. I need a minus cosine squared x, so let's subtract 1 from both sides. That'll give me sine squared x minus 1, and subtract cosine squared x from both sides, which gives me negative cosine squared x. Now we see an identity replacement. That is sine squared x minus 1 is negative cosine squared x. So, replacing the numerator of sine squared x minus 1 with negative cosine squared x, the denominator is sine x plus 1, quantity squared, and we transform the left-hand side to match the expression on the right-hand side. Again, let me note, all transformations must take place on one side of the equal sign only.